Hi guys, my next Let's Play is Dissidia Duodecim Final Fantasy. So I was already planning to do a retro recommendation video of this game, but I thought since I'm going to be recording footage and since the announcement of the new Dissidia game for next year has been, uh, has been made by Square Enix, I thought I'll just record the footage that I'm going to be taking anyway and give you guys an extended look at the game. So I played this game a lot and the original Dissidia game uh, back when they were released. So I'm going to kind of just jump into the story mode, just see where, where I am on it, and, uh, and have, a, have a little bit of a play. So one thing very cool about this game for Dissidia Duodecim is that you've actually got the original Dissidia um, story in it, but it's got the updated systems of the Dissidia Duodecim version. So you've got the, the Duodecim version and you've got the original, which is really good actually. These are really long games. So I'm going to play, pick up my playthrough from when I had Cloud Strife uh, from Final Fantasy VII. So this was my level 100 character. Uh, I'm just going to give it a go and see how it goes. So bonus line level 2. I don't know if I actually finished the game entirely because after you finish the main quests there are lots of uh, extra levels that get unlocked. So I may be just jumping into kind of a new, a new level here really that I never tried. One of the major differences between Dissidia and Dissidia Duodecim is the level select or stage select area. So in Dissidia, it was really kind of like a flat board that you would navigate to then move between battles. Well, but for Dissidia Duodecim, you actually no, have a kind of a small nothing. map, like a world open area, so these where you would move between the different enemies the world, and also huh? try and find items. I wonder how we're supposed to find them. We probably have to fight more. Just to feed every enemy we encounter. Don't know if we should be running into battle without knowing what's going on. So the graphics all, look a lot worse than they did back on the PSP fight. screen. Uh, I'm playing this I on my Vita TV and recording the footage. Hmm. So on a big screen, it does not that. look great. Hmm. It looks very pixely. It's good to have you I think with on us, the Cloud. actual Vita screen you when I tried it a couple days through. ago, it looked a lot better than this at least, Cecil. but it still does look very pixely. <laughs> Guess we all need some the of the story sense. for for this game, Dissidia and Dissidia Duodecim, are really sense. pretty silly and nonsensical no. at times. That's not it. I'm just. Destiny's burden weighs heavily on Cloud's giant sword. If he obtains his shimmering crystal. So the story for both games, Dissidia and Duodecim, is pretty nonsensical. Cast a light it's basically involves a war going on within. between Chaos and Cosmos, the god of dark and the goddess of light. And they both bring in warriors to fight the battle for them and tip the battle in their favours. Um, and along the way you learn more about each of the characters and basically just go through lots of kind of extended random stories.
the text especially, the voice, uh, the voice and dialogue is really over the top and kind of silly to be honest. That wasn't really the selling point of the game. When this game was coming out, I remember the di director would talked about how he wanted to create a game where players would feel like they're in the battles of Advent Children. So Final Fantasy VII had a, a movie called Final Fantasy Advent Children. And the battles there were pretty epic and with Cloud and Sephiroth jumping around the screen. It was pretty impressive. That's kind of what this was aiming to be and it really, really did capture that. I remember having some really good uh, fights in this game where just really long extended fights, just kind of amazing battles, even between, I remember one having one fight between Cloud and Sephiroth, having it last like five or ten minutes. And it was just really cool, really awesome how it just kind of went on. It really made you feel like you were kind of this hero in this uh, in the middle of this battle. Um, now, the only problem right now is I am so over level that Right now, I'm just killing everybody, as you can see. Note. So I'm going to jump out of the story mode and basically just take on a random battle, just to give me a bit more challenge, really, because this is this is a bit easy. I'm going to take on a quick battle. So actually, I've unlocked all the characters, which is good. Um, I'll play Cloud again, and what I want to do is take on Steve Sephiroth, but I want to make sure that he is, yes, he's level 100, great. So that'll make it interesting. I really like all the different stages here, but what I think is pretty cool is where some of the stages, like Planet's Core, that's a good one, where they're very, there's a lot of verticality, so you're kind of jumping high in the sky and dodging, and it's really cool just to have a battle with this big with these really massive arenas. I'm gonna take on the rift, that one's a quite a fun one. CPU strength, I'll say average, level CPU type. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it all like that and just uh, and just start. And you can also change the battle music, which is pretty cool. What do I want to fight to? I'm quite a big fan of Final Fantasy games, and especially... Oh yes, Blinded by Light. I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy games, and the music especially is something that I really love. So let's go with Final Fantasy XIII, Blinded by Light. So from memory, you've got a break gauge and an HP gauge. Are you ready for this? And your break gauge is basically your attack power. So you've got a break attack and an HP attack. So what you want to do is hit them with the break attack to build up your break gauge and reduce their one. And then once it's sufficiently strong, you then use your HP attack to kind of actually hurt them and take down their HP and ultimately kill them. So I had a quick playthrough of this a couple of days ago, just to test out the game, make sure I kind of have a little bit of a feel for it, but I think I definitely need more practice. I haven't figured out how to dodge yet. Cut. Vanish. To the promised land. Dodge this. You see, I'm no hero. Cool, you can actually save the replays as well of when you uh, have good matches. 
I'm gonna have give this guy a rematch. Guess there's no getting around this. The game has a massive amount of customization. There's lots of different weapons and armor that you can get for each character. And then there's also summons to unlock. So what you saw there is a summon that gets triggered automatically when certain conditions are met. So you can use the ones that will best fit your playstyle. So if you want to be more defensive, then you can choose ones that will help with that. Or if you want to choose ones that will help you survive one last hit maybe. Uh, there's so many different choices, so many different ones to unlock. It was a very cool and smart way to use summons from all the different Final Fantasy mythologies. Fly. To the promised land. Fly. Fly. So when you break an opponent, that's when you knock down their break gauge to zero, and then I believe you maximize your break gauge. So that's the time to really start performing HP attacks to try and completely kill them. Now I mentioned already that the story is not great for this game, but the fan service is amazing. So you can see the moves that Cloud and Sephiroth are doing. You've got all these different special moves that come straight out of the uh, out of the games that each character is from. I thought it was really cool just seeing all of these moves come to life. When you play games like Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy IV, you're seeing these small characters on the screen. It's turn-based battles. You're not really seeing these amazing moves and epic battles in the same way that you get to see it in Dissidia. It's one of the reasons I love this game so much. So what I don't really remember is how to do dodging properly. Uh, I also wonder if... Okay, Let me test you. I can try and change equipment, but I guess not. <laughs> To the promised land. Dodge. Fly. Not there. You're gone. To the promised land. Go. Go. To the promised land. You see, I'm no hero. Are you ready for this? 
I'm gonna give Kane a go. He was always a cool character. So I'm gonna try Kane and have him fight. Let's go Gilgamesh. He was always a fun character as well. And let's change the stage. Dreams End from Final Fantasy X, I believe. When Square Enix revealed yesterday the new Dissidia for PS4 that's coming next year, uh, they only mentioned that there's 20, well, over 20 characters. Hopefully, uh, there'll be a lot more than that because City on the PS2, well, City do a decade. There are quite a lot of characters we have, so I'd hope we have at least as many as uh, that. Ha <laughs> ha 
So I remember the EX Core lets you activate that special move. You can see there was an EX Core in play and he grabbed it, so I could be going in a bit of trouble. Mock me and I'll squash you! about demoralizing. Huh! <laughs> 
So I'm going to end this uh, video here, guys. I'm going to play some more and make sure I kind of understand the game better before I do the retro recommendation video. Uh, I may also throw up another Let's Play for Decidia Duo Deccan as I'm recording a bit more footage. If you'd like to see more, then please let me know and uh, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, and otherwise, just thanks for watching, guys.